So my name is Ben Chamberlain. I'm in computer science. I'm studying statistical machine learning. I'm being supervised by Dr. Mark Dazenot. So specifically, I look at what you can learn from social networks. So what can you learn from who your friends are and what your friends do, even if you don't say the kind of person you are on social media? Well, I, actually, I did a few things before I came here. So my first job out of university was as a trader at Lehman Brothers. I don't know if you've heard of Lehman Brothers. So Lehman Brothers is the, it's actually holds the world record for the largest ever corporate bankruptcy. And I was a property derivatives trader. So I think by the time I went bankrupt, I'd lost $200 million. So that took a bit of time to get over really. It was a bit, quite a disappointing outcome from your first job. And having gone through that, I decided actually that the city wasn't really for me and that I wanted to get back into doing science again. So I got a job at a, at a company called Kinetic which if you haven't heard of it, it's, it's actually the largest private research organisation in the UK. It used to be part of the government, it used to be something called DERA, um, but it was privatised in 2002, so it's now Kinetic. And so I was, um, I was a research scientist there working on signal processing. And then during the course of my time, I managed to transition into becoming a data scientist, which is this new buzzword about big data and stuff like that. And I ended up uh, being a contractor, actually, at GCHQ. So a similar job to Edward Snowden's. In fact, I was working on all of the same stuff that Edward Snowden kind of put out there in the world. And when that happened, it suddenly became much more difficult to work on that kind of stuff as a contractor. So I took what I'd been doing in social media and uh, moved to a startup in the city, in uh, actually in the West End, London, called StarCamp. So StarCamp, it's the same kind of things you can imagine the government wants to do. So they want to find out about you know, who, who might be bad guys from their networks and who their friends are and try and identify terrorist networks. So it's like that except trying to identify networks of people that like golf or people that like coffee or any, anything that you can use to sell or to target advertising slightly better than the really dumb way that it's done at the moment. Yeah, well, so I actually I'm still I'm still working. So I have this industrial fellowship from the Royal Commission for the Exhibition of 1851. So I work while I'm studying here. Um, and they're, I mean they're all that you know being a data scientist is a great job. So it's it's quite academic, but also you get to see more uh, real world impact than you would do I think purely well for mo a lot of academics anyway. So a lot of academia you you take something to a prototype stage and that's where for many people all of the interest is and then you kind of either it comes to nothing or you hand it over to someone else so the thing about working i guess uh, as an industrial data scientist is that you you do the prototyping but then you actually have to supervise the rollout so the scale up and then how things are used in production and that that has a lot of boring elements to it of course so you you have to you know make sure things work all of the time and make sure you know that they scale and write user guides and all that kind of slightly dull stuff. But you also get to see the things that you came up with have an impact in the real world. Yeah, so it's it's really quite tricky if um, if you can't hand in the same homework for both. It's really yeah, it's it's quite hard. And you have you find that certainly in your job that you're trying to move your job so that it can be closer to things that you can submit for your PhD. Now, the problem with doing that is that it means that there might be something like really kind of easy that would sort of work 80%, right? And in a lot of companies, 80% is good enough, but that's not gonna get you any publications, that's not gonna get you a PhD. So you're, the really strong temptation is to go for the kind of 90, 95% solution because it's innovative and new, and, but that takes longer and might never work. And so there's a, there's a real tension between trying to do research and also kind of deliver value for a company. Yeah, well, it, I guess it's, I think at the time those um, league tables had just come out where Imperial was put number three in the world, which is pretty good. And um, it, yeah, it has a huge reputation for, for science and technology. And it's also, as far as I know, pretty, I mean, I was at Oxford as an undergraduate and it's much, much more commercially minded than Oxford. So lots of students here are kind of thinking about doing startups or thinking about um, what they're gonna do in industry. There's a really, really active uh, industrial commercial 
uh, liaison going on here and obviously being in London for me who wanted to work at the same time as study is ideal and my, my company is you know, just uh, you know, 20 minutes away so it's really great yeah so <clears throat> the, I mean the dream would be to start up on my own yeah because it's, it's quite a big movement about big data and data science right now it's all very new and there's quite a lot of money and a lot of jobs actually out there so it'd be nice to start up on my own but I guess you you need the idea I don't have an idea so maybe maybe just a, a kind of lead data scientist role at a big corporate would be interesting the right kind of thing Spotify maybe something like that would be nice Google you know.